Hey, what is going on YouTube? Aaron here. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. And guys, welcome back to Strategy Saturday, Friday, whatever day of the week you end up watching this video on, the strategy portion of my YouTube channel where we try to help the player base improve. As the past few weeks, I have seen some of the most abysmal gameplay I have ever seen in this game without... It's probably a little bit of hyperbole there, but it's not just me who has noticed it. I feel like games are lasting five and six minutes with four or five ships dead in those five or six minutes. And instead of just complaining, I'm going to try and make the Legends community a little bit of a better place by explaining certain strategies to help you do better. And if you see someone who needs them, go ahead and link them this video. Now, that being said, you are allowed to complain. I feel like there's a certain few people. It's like, you can't complain about anything. You just have to accept it. And it's I just, I guess me personally, I will never understand how somebody could load into like a higher tier match, you know, take the time to get a higher tier boat and then play 90 seconds and think that that is fun. But alas, people have fun in many different ways. But in order to help the fellow, you know, my fellow teammates here, we're going to go over a few things in this video. Now, I, I could do a million different strategies and explain a million different things in this video and each one of you could probably follow those things to the T, and you could still potentially lose or have a bad game. Each game is so unique and so different, which is part of the fun of this game. But what we're going to do is go over each class here. I've got a little destroyer, as we can see, a little cruiser, and a little battleship here on the map. And we're going to talk about the different islands. Now, this is also going to apply for domination you know, primarily instead of capture the base, as you know, capture the base, the circle is back here. And the strategy changes a little bit for capture the base, but I, I hate capture the base for a few reasons because you will get destroyer players who will take their ship and instead of going to what would have been the nearest capture point, they'll sail all the way over here to get around and try and torpedo the battleships on the back of the map here. So for this example, we're going to go ahead and just use the domination. So we have the A, B, and C cap. We are on the map Trident here, and I will go ahead and insert a little, you know, uh, gameplay footage of Trident. Most of you should know Trident. It's one of the kind of original maps to the game. It's a very, I like Trident. It, it's a good map. This, this area over here near C is a little bit exposed. And actually on this image, I believe our domination capture point goes to this island here. So just be weary that some of these maps and scaling is going to be a little bit weird. I also tried to include a, a little bit of a yellow circle here to indicate what would be your concealment ring. Now, again, this is definitely not drawn to scale, but just bear with me. This video is just more of a basic, you know, information guide instead of a more detailed, in-depth tutorial. All right, guys, let's go ahead and start off this lesson by talking about destroyers. As most of you already know, destroyers are some of the fastest, stealthiest ships in the game. And due to that advantage, your primary goal while having torpedoes is actually not to torpedo battleships. I know a few Shima mains are going to be really surprised by that. But your primary goal in a destroyer is to get to the nearest objective to spot and to cap. Now, there's a little caveat to this, and as we mentioned in our, you know, hold your flank video, let's say that you spawn here on the left near the alpha cap. It is completely acceptable to play anywhere in this region. Heck, even if you want to play the B cap, let's say that there's no destroyers here. If you wanted to play the B cap, that would be okay. But the wrong play, in my opinion, is to completely go to the one line here or to the opposite side in order to get behind the enemy to get torpedoes on target. Now, I know that some players, some self-proclaimed experts are going to tell you that this is the correct play. But let's say, for example, that the enemy destroyer goes right to alpha and then decides to hunt you down or what have you. You are putting your team on an in an immediate disadvantage by not going straight here to this region to try to provide spots for them. And we're going to, each of these classes kind of plays off of each other. For example, the cruiser would go to this island here or this island and rely on the spots from the destroyer in order to DPM. Now, a good radar cruiser or cruiser player will go right here and will support their destroyer player right there. Something you need to pay attention to when you are playing destroyer is your team support. This is something I sort of fell victim to when I was learning to play destroyers better is I was I would go out here and try and, you know, aggressively attack the enemy destroyer depending on what boat I'm in, of course. And I would get caught by, you know, my teammates would completely abandon me and I would have no fire support. Now, of course, this is mitigated when you play in divisions or you can look at the mini-map, as we've talked about a few times. If you're not looking at the mini-map for like 40% of the game, you're doing yourself a disservice because 
you know, mini map awareness is situational awareness. And if you are not situationally aware, well, that is, you know, when you get broadsided and dev struck and you have a 90 second game as we were talking about. But just to reiterate, your, your role in a destroyer is to spot, it is to cap, and then finally it is to torpedo. As soon as you get this capture point and a, a, an emphasis in domination games, I like to control at the very least two domination points. If the enemy gets C, that's okay. But if you guys have A and B, the enemy is then forced, if they want to win, to come into you. And in that situation, you can take your destroyer somewhere out here, and you can just torpedo here. Let's, let's do a little uh, supreme uh, video editing here. Let's say your destroyer is placed right here. Now, these battleships and cruisers, and even destroyers, have to come into this position here. So when they are sailing in, now you can set up a crossfire of torpedoes. Let's say that you have a cruiser or something right here. So this ship is now bow tanking this ship over here. You put your destroyer near this island or out here, now you have free access to their broadside for torpedoes. So it, it it's laughable to me when people just avoid the capture points in their Shima and they try to go behind you know the enemy flank when if they were to get the capture point from the get-go, they would have much more success. Now, a counterpoint to that is let's say that you are, you know, a torpedo focused destroyer and you try to get the capture point and you are pressed by you know a hydro gunboat or something like that because there are different classes of destroyers as we know it is completely acceptable if you see that this cap is contested or you see that a destroyer is pushing you to leave let the cap go do not sacrifice your ship in the first two minutes trying to get a capture point which can easily be attained later now people are gonna people may think that's contradictory information however as soon as they and you give up the capture point try and get a flank here or even do a you know a loop back here and go back to the capture point. Usually, you can bait your enemy into making a mistake. And I actually have a video that we mentioned the other day of a competitive game that I will put up, uh, you know, and, and just talk about these different points and kind of, you know, put them into action for you guys. But uh, baiting your enemy into making mistakes is a lot better than you making the mistake yourself. And of course, we're all going to make mistakes. I've made mistakes, but, uh, you know, people think that... Trying to get the capture point is the end-all be-all, and it is. However, you do not want to sacrifice your destroyer in the first two to three minutes in order to do so. So a final little recap here, and again, I know this is a very basic video, and I'm using paint here on my $1,500 Mac, but try to get their capture point, and in doing so, you are going to end up spotting for your team. And as when those things happen, then you can go ahead and, you know, remove some responsibility for, uh, you know, spotting and capping and then go and torpedo. Uh, another little side point in this particular map on Trident here, once you get the A cap, let's say that you, you, you know, there's only two destroyers, I would go and put my destroyer in the B cap. Because as we mentioned, as soon as you control a majority of these capture points, the enemy is forced to come to them. And then you can set up your torpedo lanes, etc. All right, so next we're going to go ahead and talk about cruisers. Now, cruisers, there are so many different varieties of cruisers. We have agile cruisers, radar cruisers, etc. I'm just going to go over a few basic strategies. I could probably do a whole video on the different play styles of cruisers. However, there is a few just key you know, points that I want to make. Cruisers are your main DPM type ships. They usually have a faster rate of fire, medium caliber guns, and of course the HE spam meta in this game is something that battleship players just immediately go to the forums and complain about instead of being better battleship players. But regardless, uh, we're going to talk about two separate types of cruisers here. Imagine like a Baltimore or a Russian type cruiser with a strong radar, and that's the first type of cruiser we're going to talk about. Um, and in this specific cap on this on Trident here, I would take my radar cruiser and either head to this island here or this island particularly. This is a very good island. Now, as I mentioned, each map is going to have its own unique islands and different crossfire points. Uh, so on Trident here, near the A cap and I, this particular spawn, I would take my cruiser here and try to, you know, radar coverage this cap as well as support my destroyer if he decides to go right here. And this is just a little point I'm going to mention, and I should have mentioned it in the destroyer portion, but whatever ship you're in, it doesn't really matter. You should never be on top of your teammates. When that happens, and we'll use our magic little arrow here, when that happens, let's say that a battleship and a cruiser sit here together, right? 
you are just removing any and all firing angles. Let's say another ship gets out here. Well, now they have crossfires on you. So when I see battleship players just aimlessly following at the back of the map, that to me is like, you. it's like traveling in basketball. It's like handball in soccer. It is the worst play, one of the worst plays you can make as a battleship player or a cruiser player uh, or even a destroyer player because you're removing all of those firing angles. But... Uh, that little side point, you know, aside, I wanted, uh, if I would, like I said, if I were a radar cruiser, I would put my ship right here. So that way I have crossfires over here and I can radar coverage this cap. Um, on top of that, let's say that I do, uh, you know, our destroyer, we do radar the destroyer and with some team focus fire from the battleship included. Yes, battleship players, your job is to shoot at destroyers. I know that doesn't deal a lot of damage, um, but XP wise, 5,000 damage to a destroyer is worth more XP than 5,000 damage to either a cruiser or a battleship. Uh, XP is ratioed, so that that 5,000 damage is worth a lot more uh, than you know ship with a ships with a larger health pool value. But let's say that we do focus fire that destroyer in combination with your other destroyer and hopefully your battleship, which is on either flank here. Uh, we do get him. Then you could potentially either focus on a ship if it were here, make sure there's nothing out here, because I would move up and I would put my cruiser. Let's see if I can grab it here and do a little bit of editing here. Um, but I would put my cruiser here and I would actually angle it a little bit to the left, but peek around this island and then any battleships or any other ships here. Maybe there's a battleship here. I've seen that play before, but whatever it is, now you have crossfires on these ships. Um, so that is... You know, just talking about angles, like we mentioned earlier, 70 to 80 percent of this game is trying to get an angle on your opponent. Not only do you have an angle, you now have this capture point, and these ships have to push into open water to you. So let's say they try to get A, and you have a ship over here. Now that ship has a crossfire on them. So getting the capture point and supporting your destroyers in a cruiser is essential. Now it is definitely not a primary role in a cruiser to spot or or um, to, well, to spot and to cap. However, it is one of those sub roles. Cruisers are some of the most versatile ships in the game. Uh, so if you have the ability, you know, the opportunity to cap, I would do so. Now let's go ahead and move on to the second type of cruisers, the agile, fast kiting cruisers. Um, and those are better played in open water. These are going to be your French, your Italian, even some of your Japanese. And you could even put an American cruiser or a slower cruiser out here. However, you would definitely want to utilize something like smoke or concealment in order to not get broadsided from the middle of the map. But if I was in a French or an Italian cruiser, I would probably play this position right here. So that way I could get broadsides on the middle of the map over here. And let's go ahead and let's just say, uh, let's just move our little cruiser, of course. Work with me here, paint. Work, work with me. Work with me. Nope. Not going to happen? Yeah, there we go. Let's just move our little cruiser over here. Uh, in this position, you definitely want to be angled away. I can't rotate the, the icon here, but you would basically want to be turning your butt towards the enemy while still trying to get a majority of your guns on target. And that allows you to get out of harm's way if necessary. Some people get caught bow in, and it's very funny just to see battleship players, especially this one guy. I don't know why this comment stuck with me, but I was turning out in a battleship, and he's like, well, yeah, you don't know how to angle. And I think people's understanding of angling is just to sit bow in in their battleship, like moving up one kilometer here. Yes, you are angled, but you are not angled in the most effective manner. When you kind of, and I'll, I'll put up a little diagram, uh, in, uh, you know, in game of, you know, kind of this reverse kiting angle here, that allows you to escape a lot quicker as well as get all of your guns on target. So, uh, when we talk about that reverse kiting angle and these kind of, you know, that style of play, this is what we're talking about. But these ships uh, utilize their speed to get flanks. Now, again, going all the way out here or all the way out here is definitely not a play I would recommend. You want to be in range of a majority of the ships in this side. Now, different builds, of course, are going to have different ranges, um, you know, respectively. But putting your cruiser out here to get these crossfires is going to be a much better play. On top of that, you have access to nearly all of the cap here. So you would be able to, you know, smash or, or help your friendly destroyer if he decided to stay on your flank. And here is just a good example of why you need to stay on your flank as a destroyer. Let's say your cruiser goes here 
but you go all the way over here as a destroyer. Well, now you've just left him and this battleship, if, if that's how the spawns work out, we know that that's you know, not how every game goes, but you've just left the, these two players out to dry. And that is why I recommend playing each class, so that way you know when you're leaving a teammate out to dry. Now, as we mentioned, if there's like three battleships over here and you're getting severely focused, you know, stop shooting your guns, go dark, reposition around one of these islands here, or even go back to here. Uh, so many players just keep shooting their guns, and that's, again, I, like I said, this, this portion of cruisers is already too long, I can tell, but there are so many lessons that we can learn in cruisers, and cruisers by far are the least and the worst played class in Legends. I think also a lot of cruiser players think that they're particularly good when they are saved by overpens a lot. Um, I have a video of just the worst RNG where we were shooting broadside cruisers all day. And yeah, but anyway, those are the two types of cruisers and how I would play each one. All right, guys, and finally we have our battleships, of course, as indicated by the, what is this, a trapezoid with two lines through it here. Your battleships are the main alpha strike. They have the largest guns in the game with some of the best armor in the game. But as a drawback, you have some of the worst concealment as well as usually being slower than both cruisers and destroyers. And as a result of this, a lot of battleship players uh, tend to sit back and don't put themselves in positions to help their team right away. And on the contrary, some, you know, certain battleship players YOLO rush into the cap here and decide that they want to take the A cap in the opening minutes. You see this a lot with German battleship players or uh, with Italians with secondary builds. And while secondary builds can certainly be viable, rushing in and losing 75% of your health just to get this capture point and get some secondaries on target in the first three minutes of the game is a losing play. I'm sure you had fun in that, you know, 90 seconds that your secondaries were going off like a fireworks show, but you are, you're basically putting your team in an eight on nine right off the bat. And if you are losing 75, if you're losing more than half of your health in a battleship in the first five minutes, you're probably not positioning correctly. But how I would position in a battleship is I would go off of what my cruiser or other ships do. And again, we talked about this in each of our portions. Whatever your teammates do, you should do the opposite. So let's say that we have a kiting cruiser that goes out here. I would put my battleship in one of these two lanes to get crossfires on here, as well as look for crossfires over here. Battleships, as we know, have some of the longest ranges in the game. However, for Legends, cruisers kind of reign supreme with, you know, tying them in certain ranges. And I, I agree with the sentiment that cruisers should not have as long a range as battleships. I think battleship ranges should be a little bit longer, but alas, we, we you know, it's a, a mute point at, at this point. Um, and it, let's say that we do have a radar cruiser that goes here. I'd put my battleship out here. Now, I wouldn't go all the way out here, and I would maybe use, a, you know, utilize this island and then go in and bow tank or put myself in a reverse kiting angle. However, it really depends on what battleship you're in. If you're in a French battleship with a speed boost and a reload booster, I would get myself out here and play it like a big cruiser. If I'm in a very slow, sluggish American battleship or Russian battleship, I would put it right here, uh, you know, in, or slowly move out this way. And a main point that I just want to get across to a lot of these battleship players is the same with destroyer players and the same with cruiser players. There is, you know, each end of the spectrum, right? There is the battleship player that reverses from the start. If you reverse from the start with the exception of maybe like shards, B spawn, or, you know, there's this, there's this, a few maps in this game that could definitely use a rework of the spawns. But um, if you reverse from the start in a battleship player, you are, you, it, that's, again, that's just like, that tells me like, uh-oh, this is, this is going to be a long match. What you should do is you should angle in one direction or the other. So let's say your cruiser goes this way. I would go this way. And you should put yourself in a position to where you can quickly either turn in or avoid sailing broadside. You will see these battleship players sail broadside across this portion of the map because they got a crack in over here once. And yes, while this side of the map may be more favorable for you, if you spawn at A, please play A. I, I don't know how many you know times I need to say it. When you leave your spawn, you just immediately leave your teammates out to dry. And like we said, a good portion of this, it's this is a team-based objective game. And I hate when people, you know, let let's use the example of a German battleship main who just rolls in here, uses secondaries, does 30,000 damage and dies in the first four, you know two minutes. Well, he had fun. Well, that's fine. But the other eight players who are now at a huge disadvantage, 
don't have, you know, are not having fun or potentially didn't have fun. So I know that, you know, it's a video game and we're never going to get every single player to agree on one thing. Uh, but but you need to also be aware of your fellow man and try and support them. Now, on the contrary, if you spawn with German Battleship Main and you see that he's over here, go and support him, right? Send your destroyer ahead, try and get the enemy destroyer, because if you can get that enemy destroyer, the cruiser, you know, helps DPM another battleship, and, you know, this battleship torpedoes or secondaries the cruiser, now you do have a massive advantage. So there's definitely two, you know, as there are kind of two types of, you know, gunboat destroyer, torpedo destroyer, DPM, radar cruiser, agile cruiser. There's two types of battleships, as we mentioned, the sniping battleship and the German or the, the brawling battleship. So if you see that you've got a brawler, get in close, right? Now, again, there's two extremes. Don't YOLO rush in, but also don't play your German. I have a video of a guy in the GK or something, just like he's playing out here, spamming the comm wheel the whole time. And that is <laughs> one of the most annoying things in the game but uh yeah hopefully you guys took away a lot from that i this video is probably not going to end up as well as i want it to be or received as well as i want it to be but if you've made it this far in the video please leave a like subscribe if you're not already leave a comment i'm just trying to simply uh provide a better overall matchmaking experience for a majority of you know us and legends some people are going to call me an elite arrogant narcissist and that's fine uh, I just truly will never understand how some people could go into a game they enjoy, or even any game, get to the highest level, and then spend 90 seconds in a 15-minute game and just leave their teammates out to dry. Now, I, mistakes happen, of course, but the amount of times this week that I have seen four ships dead, and it, like it's just, yeah, but uh, as we mentioned earlier, that's the end of my little rant here. I really hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you learned something from that. I think I'm going to do a specialized video on each class and going over their roles. But as we mentioned, destroyers are there to spot and cap. Cruisers are there to DPM and support. You know, you're just a true support ship in a cruiser. Whatever you can do, do it. Uh, and battleships are there to attract damage and also dish out damage. A lot of battleship players forget that. Uh, you, you're main, one of your main, you know, sub... Uh, objectives in a battleship is to attract damage. Now, it is partly the fault of the development team for not including attracted damage in the final economy or the final results screen, so players never see that unless they look at their individualized stats, but that is definitely uh, one of your main roles in a battleship. But as I mentioned, guys, if you've watched this far, I really appreciate you guys. I, these videos take, this video is going on four hours now for me to edit. So uh, likes, comments, if you're, you know, even if you want to say Aaron sucks in the comments, then, <laughs> then that helps the YouTube algorithm so it can get out there to more players. Also, you should share this video with a few other players. Um, you know, if, if somebody needs some help or they're learning or their butt cheeks at the game, I don't know, share the video with them or tell them to come to this video. But uh, I appreciate the support. I love you guys. A run out. Peace.